There's been many a scandal throughout history, including in the art world. Even though art is subjective, people still have a lot to say about certain pieces and sometimes it's a little dramatic. We're here to tell you all about these pieces as we count down the top 10 scandalous paintings from history that'll make you blush. Part 2. Number 10. Ye Olde Snapchat Here we have a painting of a woman in the nude, relaxing yet confident in expressing her femininity. Painted by Francisco de Goya in 1790, it was privately commissioned and was never meant for public viewing. Alas, here I am talking about it on the internet. The woman depicted in this painting is supposedly based on de Goya's mistress. Realist style painters often use nudity from their own lives. They came from lower classes, prostitutes, actresses, and in this case, lovers. I was going to make a joke about side chicks and nudes, but in all in all honesty, the paintings are well done and I know I could never paint like that. This is a serious talent. My art projects were interesting to say the least. But maybe someone could paint me like that? At number 9, Easter Procession in a Village. For many years, religion influenced much of the art world. Many of the most famous pieces were some kind of depiction of a religious figure or religious event, and though some artists followed the unspoken rule of keeping these holy pieces family friendly, others didn't and it caused some tension. Vasily Perova's painting Easter Procession in a Village from 1861 was one of those paintings that faced some backlash for the content of the piece, not necessarily because it was NSFW, but because of how people were depicted in the painting. This art artist was known to paint the common folk rather than people of high status like other artists at the time. In his Easter piece, he portrayed a celebration of the religious holiday, however people were upset and felt disrespected by the activities that the subjects in the painting were taking part in. There were images of people in a drunken state and it even showed a priest being crushed under the foot of a peasant, which was a huge no-no in the eyes of a lot of people. The artist was accused of immorality, but the piece still went on to gain fame. Number 8. The Awakening. The Birth of Venus. I could come out here and tell you guys that I'm a refined gentleman, a curator of the fine arts, in search of higher culture and the expression of true artistry. But the truth is I watch way too much reality TV for that to come anywhere close. But the closest we as a species can get to perfection, according to some highly educated art people that are way smarter than me, is Sandro Botticelli's The Birth of Venus. Probably the or one of the most famous paintings ever to come out of the Renaissance. Completed sometime in the 1480s and commissioned by the Medici family, this naked lady's got some history. She represents the new revival, the Renaissance, and all her tall standing beauty. However, this painting may not be for a younger audience, as she is naked and her bosom exposed. Also, there's not much coverage downstairs as her lady bits are close to being exposed. But still, a really historical painting. At number 7, Christ in the Desert. So many artists over the years have created their own depictions of Jesus Christ in different settings. Most of the time, Jesus is shown to be looking like a ray of hope for people in the holiest of settings, often performing miracles or just being a savior. But in Ivan Kramowski's painting, Christ in the Desert, the artist takes a very different approach to his depiction of Jesus Christ and it got him a lot of scrutiny. In this piece, Jesus is seen sitting on a rock in the desert as part of his temptation by the devil in his 40 day fast after being baptized, but he is seen in a more human way, so to speak. Jesus looks tired with his hands clasped in front of him, almost giving a sense of hopelessness to the piece. People were shocked by the artist's portrayal of Jesus' suffering in the desert and called the piece blasphemous, saying that the artist desecrated something sacred by creating this painting. Though this was seen as controversial at the time, this piece became one of the artist's most famous and most powerful pieces of his career. Number 6. Love Trumps All We have seen a ton of ladies here. Turns out people really like to paint naked ladies. Almost as if people like art or something like that. But today we're switching it up a little and throwing some male nudity in the pot. This lovely painting was painted in a short time frame, 1602 to 1603. Depicted in a more Vincent Omnia is Cupid in his boyish charm, trampling over musical instruments with a general feeling that love trumps all. And while I cannot deny that I love hugs and chocolate chip cookies from my mother, this painting shows a little bit more than just love. Cupid is posed in a way that reveals his, uh, his Pichadil, his John Hancock, his chief of staff, his trouser snake, 
his German army helmet, his manhood. I think you guys get the point. All jokes aside, this painting became quite popular after it was finished, inspiring other artists in writing about such a magnificent piece of art. At number five, erased de Kooning. Imagine working so hard on something just for someone to erase it and pawn it off as their own. Well, this is what caused a pretty big scandal in the art world between American artist Robert Rosenberg and Dutch American artist de Kooning. In 1953, de Kooning was a legend in the art world, and Rosenberg asked him if he could have one of his artworks. At first, he was hesitant to give it up, but eventually de Kooning gave up one of his pieces. I'm sure he certainly regretted that decision after seeing what Rauschenberg did to it afterwards. A few months after owning the de Kooning piece, Rauschenberg erased it and called it his own. Yes, he erased the whole thing until the canvas was blank and then published it as his own piece. First of all, it wasn't a very nice thing to do to another artist's hard work, but on top of that, it had people questioning whether this was even art. I mean, the canvas was literally blank. According to Rauschenberg, his intention with all of this was to quote, attack abstract expressionism and give artistic value to the destruction of one of its artworks. Number four, the garden of earthly delights. Nudity as far as the eye can see. Sometimes in movies and TV, a little bit of nudity pops up. It happens. Sometimes you end up watching movies with family and you had no idea that that was going to happen. Who's blushing? Are you blushing? I'm not blushing. I'm looking at you, Game of Thrones. Well, what's more scandalous than one person displaying nudity? How about a whole bunch of people displaying nudity? Said Hieronymus Botch as he painted this art between the years of 1490 and 1510. It depicts both men and women of various degrees of nudity frolicking and playing in what's either the best Where's Waldo find or where Paul McCartney writes his music. Some sort of fantasy land. With such a busy painting, a lot can be interpreted. Some say it supports creation ideals, the seven deadly sins, or perhaps a warning of being too sinful. In my opinion, it kind of looks like a water park with the Renaissance lazy river, but the style of triptych is pretty cool. And number three, Yo Mama's Last Supper. Many artists use their artwork to speak on certain injustices, discrimination, and political controversies. This is a thing that we often see in today's modern art. Sometimes people can see it as powerful, and other times it results in backlash. In Renee Cox's piece, Yo Mama's Last Supper, we saw the artist use her artistic voice to speak on the portrayal of religious figures in art and how they're often portrayed as white. In this piece, she reimagined The Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci by including black men and women in the piece. She painted Jesus and Judas as black women, and the rest of the disciples were black men. To her, this was a comment on the lack of racial and gender representation in Catholicism, despite the fact that there are many black Catholics in the world. It is a powerful piece, but that doesn't mean that every Everyone's going to like it. New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani called the piece anti Catholic and accused it of, quote, attacking people's ethnicity. End quote. Number two, the dream of the fisherman's wife. Not safe for life. All right, when I saw this one, I thought I was being pranked. I didn't believe it. I thought there was no way. Oh, my high friends, if there's a will, there's a way. Sorry about this one, editors, really. The Dream of the Fisherman's Wife was an Edo period Japanese print completed in 1814 by the most interesting Hokusai. I wouldn't recommend searching this one up at work. And I'm gonna be frank, you can use your imagination to fill in the rest, but the painting depicts a woman who is a big fan of calamari. So much so uh, that she's having what daytime soap operas would call an affair with said eight armed nautical beast and loving it. I don't know if this makes you blush, hate sea creatures, or scream and run away, but it's a thing. Japanese art and culture were more open than most as they explored a lot of different ideas through the years. Eroticism was just one of those ideas. I'm sure this had no influence on a similar tentacle media we know and some love today. Maybe we should do the top 10 most attractive sea creatures by how many limbs they have. Hey King Crab, how you doing? And finally, at number one, the guitar lesson. Following that piece of NSFW work, I'm here to bring you another pretty scandalous piece. The painting, The Guitar Lesson by Balthus, is disturbing to say the least. I mean, it's raunchy, but it's also kind of effed up. The painting depicts a music teacher and his student who are totally not practicing any instruments. In the piece, you can actually see the guitar on the floor, and rather than having fingers on strings, there are fingers in other places. This caused quite a stir in the art world because of how inappropriate the content of this piece was, and it was so controversial that people have been refusing to display it since the 1970s. Now, I can't really speak too much on this piece because it's not exactly safe for YouTube, but if you really want to see this piece uncensored and read more about the controversy, 
controversy, then I recommend you hit up Google. I'd love to say more on this, but the gods of YouTube might smite me down if I do. I mean, I am blushing after reading that one. Yeah, that one's rough. <laughs> that one's real rough. Oh, and there we have it, folks. There are 10 more scandalous paintings from history. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, make sure you leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel to see more. Until next time, I've been your host, Free Room. And I've been your host, Andrew Castongay. Stay sweepy. Bye, honeybees. <laughs> Oh, there it is right there. I'm an idiot. Depicted in a more, a more, a more, a more. King Crab, stay away from me, please. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that one. How dare you put a black person at Jesus's dinner? Why would you do that?